Here's what you won. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. And the word of God today from the King James text reads, there you go, for anybody that doesn't have it. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you bow your heads with me one more moment. Master, today we love you, God, and we are grateful for this day that is set aside each week for the people of God to assemble, to gather, to lift up your name and worship, to sing the songs of Zion, to praise and to thank you, God, for all the greatness, the goodness, the blessing that you have poured out in our lives. And Lord, also to receive from the word of the Lord. Master, I humble myself in your presence, acknowledging once again, O oh God, that I am but a man, a servant of the Most High God, and without the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Without the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I am worthless. I have nothing to offer the people of God. Master, in the name of Jesus, we're meeting in our home, but that does not hinder the Holy Ghost. Release the anointing of God in, the, in this place today. It is the house of God. For where the people of God are, the Spirit of God is. And we together rise up to create a, a, a sanctuary, a tabernacle for the Most High. Master of living brick and living stone. Master, in the name of Jesus, touch today every heart that would hear this message, touch my lips, that I might present it in a fashion that the people of God might receive it, not only in their hearing, but in their hearts, that they might benefit thereby. We ask it in that precious, sacred, wonderful, saving name, Jesus. Amen. Praise God and amen. Way back many years ago, it's been... 60 or 70 years now, I guess, if you look at the time frame, back in the 40s and what have you, they began uh, to create on television, which at that time, of course, was quite new. They began to create these television programs that are referred to as game shows. People could go on these programs and, you know, every show was a little different. Many of them would ask questions, and if you could answer correctly the question, you would win a prize. If you could answer enough questions, you might actually get to the top of the pyramid, and you might be able to win the grand prize. And oftentimes, when you would get to the end of the contest, the host of the program, my, one of my favorites was always Bob Barker. I know a lot of young people might remember him from The Price is Right, but I remember him going back to when I was a kid from Truth or Consequences. Do you remember that show? <clears throat> and I always liked Bob Barker. He, he always seemed like a nice fellow to me, and I don't want to go into any, you know, uh, accusations about him and all that. There's accusations about everybody. Somebody out there could raise accusations about me, and I know it. Because at some point in my life, I've done some things I probably shouldn't have done, and done them ways I shouldn't have done them. But I love Bob Barker. At the end of the program, when the person, Johnny, would win, you know, the grand prize, you'd hear Bob Barker say, and tell them, Johnny, what they've won. And then old Johnny, who was off on the say he was a little chubby fella. They didn't show him on there a lot, but you knew his voice, didn't you? And he'd say, and here's what you've won. <laughs> here's what you've won. The Apostle Paul said in Philippians chapter 3, 
that he was not concerned with what had already happened in his life. He was not concerned with what was in his past. He was too busy pushing forward. He made no claims of perfection, which amazes me because here's a man who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, and he was humble and honest enough to acknowledge that he had not yet received all and done all and been all that he could be. But he was still in the race. Hello now. Got news for you, children. There isn't one Christian in one church anywhere in America or around the world today who has achieved the fullness of God in their life. Right. There's not one believer in any church anywhere who has already, as Paul said, has already attained or apprehended. No, nobody in this life has yet laid their hands on the grand prize. Hello now. No, there's a lot of people that aren't humble enough and aren't honest enough to acknowledge that they have not done so. There are a lot of people in the church today who have convinced themselves that they have. Oh, I'll tell you what. I mean, I, I, you know, people think when I pick on the holiness movement, they think I'm so mean. And I was in that movement, and I love the people, and I know there's a lot of good, solid, godly, Christian, Holy Ghost-filled people in the holiness movement. So by no means am I belittling or, you know, uh, trying to, to tear down the movement as a whole. But I'm going to tell you, there is one major cancer in that movement, and it is the false notion that if you wear your hair a certain way, and you wear your dresses a certain length, and men, if you cut your hair a certain way, and you wear the right color shirt and the right color pants and the right kind of shoes, that you have laid your hands on the grand prize <laughs> by reason of your efforts, by reason of your following of rules and regulations set forth by men. Uh, wrong. Even the Apostle Paul, author of two-thirds of the New Testament, said, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Boy, I'm going to tell you, one of the hardest things in life is moving past where we've been. Hello now. One of the hardest things in life is getting past some of the stuff we've done in our past. I'm telling you, more Christians come to me and they are struggling with their past. They're struggling with things they've done. Folks, I'm going to tell you, when I was out of church, the first couple of few years I came out, um, I did some awful, horrible, terrible things. I did, and I mean, at many levels. So I'm not talking about uh, just, you know, from a sexual perspective or a social perspective. But, I mean, I'm going to tell you something. If somebody did me dirty, Johnny, I didn't have no problem turning around and just knocking them around. I didn't have no problem uh, doing people whatever way I wanted to do people because I was away from God and I gave myself permission to just do what I wanted to do. I figured, well, I'm going to hell anyway. What difference does it make? You know, might as well just live how I want to live. I'm going to tell you, that's a terrible way to live your life. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people in our communities today seem to think that living for the Lord is such a chore and it takes so much effort. But do you know the funny thing about living for God? If you live your life by God's rules, you'll have a better quality life. Mm -hmm. If you live your life by God's rules, you won't be running around hurting people. And when you're not running around hurting people, you don't have people mad at you all the time. Mm -hmm. And when you run around trying to be a blessing, the Word of God said, Give and it shall be given unto you. Pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. When you live a Christian life and you give not only of money, I'm talking about your time, your effort, your energy, you try to be a help, you try to be a blessing to people, the Word of God says you're going to get back in return. So when you live life by God's rules... Jesus said, I'm come that they might have life and have it more abundant. You wind up with a better quality life. I'm going to tell you something. I've been back in church now. I've been preaching to the LGBT community now for 25 years. 
and the quality of my life in these years has so far surpassed anything I knew when, Johnny, I was going to the clubs all the time, and I was looking for somebody to lay down with. I'm going to just say it plain, if that's all right. You know, I realize Sister High Hair Holiness is going to lose her teeth, and, you know, her hair is going to fall out by the follicle. But you know what, Sister? I'm talking to people who understand what I'm saying. I'm tired of being lonely. I'm tired of being out there looking on the hunt all the time for some. Because it wasn't sex I was looking for so much as companionship. Hello now. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of all that. But you know what? When I decided to obey God, when I decided to do things God's way, God improved the quality of my life. Hallelujah. Amen. He's given me a wonderful partner. We've been together uh, 17 years. I mean, folks, I'm here to tell you, uh, we've got a beautiful house. You know, it may not be a mansion. That's all right. I don't need a mansion. I'm not trying to keep up with the Joneses. I'm happy with what God's given me. Amen. Amen. Got my little minivan that I pay a bunch for every month. I love my little minivan. I don't have to have a Porsche, Johnny. I don't have to have a Bentley. I don't have to have a Rolls Royce. I'm living life on God's terms, not on mine. You're supposed to. Hallelujah. I'm telling you the quality of life when you live by God's rule. The word of God said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Then it lists a number of benefits. Who forgiveth all thy sins. Who healeth all thy diseases. Who delivereth thy life from destruction. Who renews your strength like the eagles. There are many benefits to living for God in this life. Those are just the prizes that you get along the way. Those are not the grand prize. There is a grand prize. One day, Johnny, like Paul, we're finally going to apprehend. We're finally going to lay our hands on the grand prize. What is that that we've won? Well, here's what we've won according to the word of God today. This is our grand prize. This is what we have to look forward to. We have a new body that we will one day occupy. I look forward to that because this one really gives me a hard time. 1 Corinthians 15, 49 through 53. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Hallelujah. Amen. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality in his epistle also second epistle to the corinthians paul said in chapter 5 verses 1 through 3 for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved meaning our bodies we have a building of God, and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. I don't know about you, but I look forward to a new body. Hallelujah. There'll be no cancer in new bodies. Hallelujah. There'll be no aches and pains in new bodies. There'll be no death nor dying in new bodies. There will be no more weariness in new body. Glory to God. There will be no uh, limitations to what we can do in new bodies. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory, 1 John 3 and 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. 
and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Glory. For we see him as he is. One of my favorite passages of scripture, and if y'all happen to be around when I decide to exit this life, provided I leave before the rapture, if you can scrape up the pennies to put this on my tombstone, I would be grateful. This is literally my favorite, honestly, my favorite passage in the entire Word of God. It speaks for me, my testimony. It speaks for me, my heart's desire above all else. It says in Psalm 17, 15, As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. Mm -hmm. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. Hallelujah. Oh, I'll never be happy in this life. I'll never be happy in this body. But I'll be happy when I awake and I look like him. Hallelujah. I'll be happy when I wake up in my new body. What have we won? Here's what you've won. Eternal life. See, that new body is necessary to eternal life. That's why I started there. <laughs> Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. 1 John 2, 25. And this is the promise that he hath promised us even eternal life. John chapter 3, verses 14 through 17. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever, that's you and me today, believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus didn't come to condemn you. He came to save you. And in order to lay hold of his promise, all you got to do is believe his word. Believe his message. If you believe it, you're going to obey it. Faith without works is dead being alone. Amen. Mm -hmm. But if we'll believe and obey the gospel, we will have a new body. We will have eternal life. Here's what you've won. Grand prize, a crown of life. 1 Corinthians 9, 24 and 25, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain, and every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. In James chapter 1 and verse 12, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10 today, Fear none of those things which thou suffer, which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. What is have you, or excuse me, here's what you've won. A new body, eternal life, a crown of life, 
And here's another part of the grand prize, a white robe, or otherwise known as a robe of righteousness. Revelation 6, 11. And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. This is talking about believers during the tribulation. Yeah. Revelation 7 and verse 9, After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and peoples and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Hallelujah. I can't wait to change clothes. I can't wait to take this old dirty thing off and put on a robe of righteousness. In Isaiah 61 and verse 10, we read, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. Hallelujah. What, here, here's what you've won. A new body, eternal life, a crown of life, a robe of righteousness. What else, Johnny? What else comes with our grand prize today? Access to the tree of life. Revelation 2, verse 7, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Revelation 22, 14, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. Hallelujah. Oh, here's what you've won. A new body, eternal life, a crown of righteousness, a robe of righteousness, a white robe of righteousness, access to the tree of life. Listen, rewards for those deeds done in this life. How many times have we done things because we believe it's right, we believe it's the thing we ought to do, and we do things because we believe that's what God asks us to do, and there's no reward in this life for that action. There's nothing, we don't get anything from it except for the satisfaction and knowing that we've done right and we've done good. But you know, the Word of God promises that everything you've done in this life, you're going to be rewarded for. Even those little things, Johnny, you're going to get to heaven and God's going to say, you remember when you did? You're going to say, Lord, I don't even remember that. He's going to say, I do. I remember. I remember when you tried to help that person who was hungry. I remember when you tried to help that person who was struggling. I remember when you were there for your dying friend. I remember when you were there for that relative who was sick. I remember every single thing. And the Word of God today promises as part of our grand prize, listen, Matthew 16, 27, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of His Father with His angels, and then He shall reward every man according by excuse me according to his works in first corinthians chapter 3 and verse 8 now he that planteth and he that watereth are one and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor Revelation 22 and 12, And behold, Jesus says, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Hallelujah. Here's what you've won. A new body, eternal life, a crown of life, 
a white robe of righteousness, access to the tree of life, and rewards for deeds done in this life. I'm going to tell you folks, our grand prize is definitely a grand prize. The Word of God tells us in 1 Corinthians 2 and 9, But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Our grand prize includes things you can't even imagine. <laughs> Our grand prize includes things that the heart of man can't even fathom. You, you just, you don't have an imagination big enough because you don't know what God is going to make us capable of. I've had people say, boy, wouldn't it be cool if the Lord allowed us to be able to just, my nose is running a little bit, so y'all bear with me. Uh, <laughs> I'm sniffing, you know, like some kind of a drug addict, but it's, my nose is running. Uh, God very well may allow us, Johnny, to close our eyes and say, I'd like to see the Grand Canyon, and open our eyes, and there we are in front of the Grand Canyon. I'd like to go here and see this, and we close our eyes and open them, and boom, there we are in front of that great place. Thank you, honey, because, yeah, my nose is wanting to run like a faucet today. <laughs> Amen. I hasn't seen, ear hasn't heard. Neither hath entered into the heart of man. Man, that is a big, big, big prize. Uh -huh. Now somebody today, you know me, if I don't preach something that's a little bit controversial, I'm just not happy. <laughs> you know, i got to say something that stirs up controversy. Somebody today is saying, well, Pastor, you've talked about all these things, but you hadn't mentioned my mansion. Why, we sang in our song today that I've got a mansion over there, and when free from toil and care, why didn't you mention the mansion that we're going to receive? Um, because the Word of God doesn't say you're going to receive a mansion. The Bible does not say that God's people are going to receive mansions. That's not what it says. This is one of those examples of tradition trouncing on truth. <laughs> Jesus and his disciples were in the wealthy side of town. They were over there in Jerusalem, and they were, they were in the Highland Park area. And they were looking at all these big, enormous, beautiful homes. And the, uh, the apostles, the disciples were commenting on, My, isn't that house huge? Isn't that mansion beautiful? And the Lord looked at them and said, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not true, I would have told you. He was saying simply to them that as big as these are, as opulent as these are, as fancy and wonderful as these are, honey, my father's house trumps these. It's big enough to put many, many, many of these in. Hallelujah. What the Lord was saying in effect was there's plenty of room in heaven for all of us. Hallelujah. There's plenty of room and glory for all of God's people. He said, oh, you know, all the splendor that you see is multiplied time and time again in my Father's house. All the grandeur that you see is multiplied time and time again in my Father's house. All the beauty, all the size, the magnificence that you lay your eye upon is multiplied over and over again. How many times have you heard somebody say, for instance, boy, you should have seen Johnny's car. Man, I'll tell you, that was the biggest car I've ever laid eyes on. You could put four Cadillacs in that thing. <laughs> Now, Johnny, can you really put four Cadillacs in that? No, you can't. But what they're trying to do is they're trying to illustrate size. They're trying to illustrate, you know. And, and or, oh, man, I'll tell you what, that house he had, boy, I mean, it was as if he took every house in Highland Park and just put them all together and made one big house. Now, was that house really that big? Was it No, but what they're trying to say is that all the fanciness, all the grandeur that you find in the houses in Highland Park are found in the home that they're describing. And what the Lord was doing when he said, um, when he talked about 
in my father's house are many mansions. He was simply trying to illustrate to his disciples that for everything you see here, my father's house is so much bigger. It's so much better. Hallelujah. I don't care what uh, mansion you got down here on earth. They're still on streets that are either made out of uh, tar or they're made out of, uh, you know, dirt or something or brick. But up in heaven, honey, we're going to walk on streets of gold. Hallelujah. So even the streets up there are made of gold. That's all the Lord was saying. So that's why I didn't include a mansion. We're not promised a mansion. You know what? I don't care if I live in a corner of heaven somewhere and there's some little mouse with a halo over his head living next door to me just so long as I make heaven. Hello. <laughs> as long as I make heaven, I'll be happy. Are you with me today? Amen. Amen. In closing this afternoon, somebody said, I can't believe preacher done that fast. This is just, this is beyond miraculous. <laughs> <laughs> In closing today, Revelation tw uh, chapter 2, verse, excuse me, chapter 3. Uh, preacher, you know you can't read without your glasses. Why do you even try? <laughs> Revelation 3 and verse 11, Jesus said, Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Oh, don't play the game till you get to the very end and blow it at the last minute. Hallelujah. Hold on to your faith. Hold on to your truth today. Hold on to your confidence in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It'll see you through to the grand prize. Lastly, I would say this. 2 John verse 8. It's 2 John first 8 because 2 John is one chapter. There are no chapters. <laughs> And John writes, look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm going to tell you, there, there ain't nothing so sad as watching somebody on one of these game shows. And Lisa, they answer all the questions. They do all the, the things they need to do. And then they get to the end and they blow it. Yeah. They get to the grand prize, the grand finale, and they blow it. And not only do they lose the grand prize, but they lose all the prizes that they had along the way. Oh, I want to tell you, there are many benefits to living for God. And I enjoy and I appreciate and I am grateful today for every benefit that I enjoy living for the Lord. But you know what? What a shame to throw all this goodness and all this blessing away and in the end to lose the grand prize. Wouldn't that just be the worst thing? Amen. I want to get my full reward. I want to get it all. Amen. I want there to be some trophies on the mantle in my house in heaven. Doesn't have to be a mansion. <laughs> Listen, I'm telling you what, God don't build nothing cheap. Hello now. So even if he gives me a hut in the corner of glory land, it's going to be a pretty fancy hut. So I'll take it. Amen. Uh, we're not going to need a kitchen over there. We're not going to need a bathroom over there. There's a lot of things we're not going to We're not going to need a bedroom over there. How much of a house do I need? Amen. Amen. We're going to have a new body. The Bible said after the resurrection, they're neither married nor given a marriage, but rather the rest of the angels. So, Johnny, uh, I'm not going to need to sleep. I'm not going to need to eat. I'm not going to need to rest. I'm not going to need to do any of those things. Certainly won't need a bathroom. How much of a house do I need? I'd like to spend all my time around the throne. Hallelujah. I'd like to be around the throne. Glory to God. I'd like to be holding hands with great grandma. I'd like to be holding hands with my grandmas and my grandpas. And I'd like to be looking into the eyes of my loved ones as we worship the Lord. And praise Him and thank Him for all He's done for us. And for allowing us to be part of His eternity. Hallelujah. Is that how you feel today? Amen. Praise God. Amen.